If you believe you have any information pertaining to this case, you are urged to contact the Baltimore County Police Department on 410-887-2214. Alternatively, you could contact the Maryland Office of the Chief Medical Examiner on 410-333-3250 or at info at ocmemd.org. This video features discussions of homicide, sexual assault, interpersonal violence and other topics some may find upsetting. Viewer discretion is advised. At around 10.20am on the 12th of September 1976, a passing motorist caught sight of a strange object situated on the ground near the roadway about 18 feet away from the back gate of the Lorraine Cemetery on Dogwood Road in Woodlawn, Baltimore County, Maryland. Upon further inspection, the motorist found this object was actually a human body partially concealed by a white sheet and promptly contacted the authorities. The ME concluded the body belonged to a woman who died within the past 24 hours before being found. It didn't take long to find out she'd fallen victim to homicide. She'd been severely beaten before ultimately being strangled to death. She had also been raped so violently it caused heavy vaginal bleeding, with the blood running down her legs. Evidence indicated she had been assaulted while suspended in an upright position. Her hands were bound behind her back by some kind of medical bandage, which extended upwards to tie around her neck in what's been described as a noose. At her time of death, she had a toxic amount of chlorpromazine in her system, which detectives believe was used to sedate her. It looked as though she died elsewhere to her site of discovery. Three cloths covered the victim's face, all of which were tied behind her neck in a square knot. The first was a yellow coloured bag for a 25 pound sack of lawn seed, bearing the words Farm Bureau Association Grass Seed, Lexington, Massachusetts. A piece of this bag had been ripped off and stuffed down her throat, which detectives believe contributed to her death from asphyxia. Law enforcement were able to determine this bag was manufactured by the Bemis Bag Company in Buffalo, New York. It was only ever sold in Massachusetts at five select locations. One in Waltham, Middlesex County, one in Lowell, also in Middlesex County, one in Rochdale, Worcester County, one in South Weymouth, Norfolk County, and one in Greenfield, Franklin County. The second cloth was a blue bandana with a white paisley print. And finally, the third cloth was an orange and white bandana, which had holes cut out to reveal the decedent's eyes and mouth. The decedent's race is officially uncertain, though she may have been of Caucasian and or Hispanic descent. Her complexion has been described as, quote, dark olive. Her age was estimated at anywhere from 15 to 30 years old. She was approximately 5 feet 6 inches to 5 feet 9 inches tall and weighed around 149 to 159 pounds. Her wavy shoulder length hair was dark brown in colour, as were her eyes. A widow's peak was present. Near her shoulder on her upper right arm, she had a crude tattoo consisting of two letters thought to be initials. These initials were hard to decipher, but may have been any one of the following. JP, JS, JD, JB, SP, SS, SD, or SB. Her ears were pierced, though she wasn't wearing any earrings. On one of her thighs, she had a noticeable one and a half inch scar, 
Most sources state this was her left thigh, though some assert it was her right. Several other scars were present on both of her knees. Her blood type was O positive. Her teeth were in good condition. Fillings were present in her left upper first and second molars, as well as her right first and second molars, and her left lower first molar. Tooth number 20 was crooked. All her third molars had been extracted, and so too had her left mandibular second molar. The victim was found wearing a white and beige short-sleeved pullover, a white size 38D bra, beige or yellow Levi jeans, and knee-high socks with a striped pattern that's been described as either brown, grey and beige, or maroon and cream in colour. It should be noted that though she was wearing socks, her feet were notably dirty. It's believed she was assaulted and killed while naked, but redressed after death. A brown leather shoe with frayed twine used as lace was found near the victim's body, which investigators believe belonged to her. Her jewellery consisted solely of a brown rawhide string necklace, with a small blue or turquoise bead or stone as its pendant. Inside her trouser pocket, two brass keys fastened to a safety pin were found. One of these was used for a night latch, and the other appeared to be a house key. One of these keys had a string of letters and numbers stamped on it. DB09212 Police found either one or both of these keys had been manufactured in Fitchburg, Massachusetts. When police began their interviews of locals, they quickly received a promising tip. A woman who was driving to church with her young child reported seeing a light blue van with panel doors parked on the side of Dogwood Road at around 9.20am. That's just an hour before police received the first report of a body being located. The woman's child identified this van as a Ford E-Series. Other interviewed witnesses didn't report seeing a body or any suspicious vehicles in the area prior to 9.20am, so authorities do believe this 4D series may have belonged to the killer. Unfortunately, this tip led to little in the way of identifying the responsible party, so police turned their efforts to identifying the victim instead. They circulated a description, dental x-rays and post-mortem pictures, and scoured missing person reports, and ran her fingerprints through their databases, but nothing seemed to match. Though they received hundreds of leads, not one led to the information they needed. Forty-five years later, both the victim and her killer remain unidentified. Due to the items found with the victim, it's thought she may have been from Massachusetts. This theory was further strengthened in 2014, when pollen analysis performed on her clothes revealed a unique combination of mountain hemlock and Lebanese cedar, which is only found in two locations, one being the New York Botanical Garden in New York City, and the other being the Arnold Arboretum of Harvard University in Boston, Massachusetts. In December 2015, it was announced by the media that a seemingly suitable match had been found. A tipster, who's remained publicly anonymous, was of the opinion that the Woodlawn Jane Doe strongly resembled a teenager they knew, who may have gone by the name Jasmine or Jazzy. Jasmine was reportedly from Puerto Rico or Colombia, and moved to Forbes Street in the Jamaica Plain area of Boston, Massachusetts, with her parents and siblings, possibly two sisters and three brothers, when she was five or six. Potential relatives could have been named Blanca, Tito and Santana. Jasmine and her siblings may have attended a Catholic school on Wyman Street. Apparently, Jasmine disappeared when she was 15 years old. If Jasmine and Jane Doe are one and the same, 
Law enforcement strongly believe the JP tattoo on her shoulder may have stood for Jamaica Plain. Unfortunately, Jasmine's surname is publicly unknown at present, and investigators have yet to locate her family to confirm the match. There have been no further updates regarding this possibility as of June 2021. Aside from that theory, there's also some evidence to suggest either Jane Doe herself or her killer had connections to a psychiatric institution. The white sheet used to cover her upper torso at her site of discovery was the type commonly found in psychiatric institutions. Clopromazine, the drug used to sedate her, is primarily used to treat psychosis in conditions such as schizophrenia or bipolar disorder. Though its popularity began to wane in the 1960s as newer antipsychotics came into use, it remained a common treatment within state hospitals until at least the late 1980s. This has led some to conjecture killer worked at a psychiatric facility, perhaps as a groundskeeper, given the lawn seed bag covering her face. Another possibility I've seen put forth is maybe Jane Doe herself was a psychiatric patient. Either way, I'd like to reiterate this is merely speculation and not proven to be fact. As of June 2021, this is just about all we know. 45 years after she was brutally assaulted and murdered, both the Woodlawn Jane Doe and her killer remain unidentified. Just to refresh your memory, it's believed the killer may have driven a light blue Ford E-Series. Both the victim and the killer could have had connections to psychiatric facilities, on account of the psychiatric medicine found in the victim's system, the medical bandage binding the victim, and the white sheet covering the victim's body. It's strongly thought that either one or both had a connection to the state of Massachusetts. The victim's name may have been Jasmine, more commonly known as Jazzy, and she may have moved from either Puerto Rico or Colombia to the Jamaica Plain area of Boston, Massachusetts in the 1960s before disappearing at the age of 15 sometime in the 1970s. The victim was possibly of Caucasian and or Hispanic descent and was around 15 to 30 years old at her time of death in September 1976. She was fairly tall at 5 foot 6 to 5 foot 9 and weighed about 150 to 160 pounds. Her hair and eyes were dark brown and her complexion was olive. Over the years, several missing people have been ruled out as potential matches. Please check the description for a list of these rollouts. Again, if you believe you have any information pertaining to this case, you are urged to contact one of the following. The Baltimore County Police Department on 410-887-2214 or the Maryland Office of the Chief Medical Examiner on 410-333-3250 or at info at ocmemd.org. Thank you very much for giving Woodlawn Jane Doe a moment of your day.